she was volcano of ideas. We hope to uh, excavate, to know more about her plans, about herself, her dynasty. It began in complete silence, deep beneath the Cairo Museum, where the air itself seemed to hold its breath. Inside a sealed chamber, scientists in sterile suits leaned over a 3,000-year-old body. Every move was cautious, every whisper measured. They weren't just studying a mummy, they were trying to resurrect a name that history had buried. When they extracted the DNA, no one expected the results to defy everything Egyptologists thought they knew. What they found in that genetic code would rewrite the story of Egypt's greatest empire and resurrect a forgotten pharaoh the world had almost erased. Her name was Hatshepsut, a name once carved deep into stone, then violently chiseled out. She wasn't meant to be remembered, but she ruled Egypt at its most powerful moment, expanding its wealth, art, and architecture beyond any before her. Yet her story was dangerous. After her death, her successors destroyed her statues, erased her name, and claimed her victories. For centuries, even scholars didn't know she had ever existed. It was as though the desert itself had swallowed her whole until science reached into the past to bring her back. Hatshepsut's rise was no accident. It was a rebellion against destiny. Born the daughter of Pharaoh Thutmose I, she was royal by blood. Married to her half-brother, Thutmose II, she became queen. But when he died, the throne passed to a child, Thutmose III, too young to rule. Tradition said she would serve only as regent, ruling temporarily in his name. But Hatshepsut had no intention of giving power back. She did the unthinkable. She declared herself pharaoh. She wore the royal headdress, the false beard of kings, and even referred to herself as His Majesty. To justify her claim, she rewrote divine law, declaring she was the chosen daughter of the god Amun himself and somehow the people believed her. Under her reign, Egypt didn't collapse under blasphemy, it prospered. She reshaped art, religion, and politics to fit her image. But that power came with a cost, because when a mortal challenges the divine order, history never forgives. Hatshepsut's Egypt was magnificent, her fleets sailed to the mysterious land of Punt, returning with gold, incense, and exotic treasures unseen in the ancient world. Trade flourished. Temples rose to the heavens. Her greatest achievement, the Temple of Deir el-Bahari, still stands today, carved into the cliffs of Thebes, glowing like sunrise in the desert. Under her reign, Egypt experienced peace, art, and prosperity beyond imagination. But behind the monuments and splendor, a shadow was growing. Because long after her death, her name would be scraped from every wall, her statues shattered, her legacy stolen. And for nearly 3,400 years, no one would know where her body lay or why she had vanished. When Hatshepsut died, Egypt's golden age dimmed, and then something unthinkable happened. Within years of her death, every trace of her reign began to vanish. Her statues were smashed to rubble, her cartouches, her royal name, were gouged out from temple walls. It was a systematic erasure, ordered by someone with access, power, and motive. But who would dare erase a pharaoh, and why destroy the memory of the ruler who brought Egypt its greatest peace? The answer, many believe, lies with Thutmose III, the boy she once ruled in place of. 
he grew into a warrior pharaoh, known for his military genius and expansion of Egypt's empire. But beneath the triumphs lay resentment, the humiliation of being overshadowed by a woman who had taken what was meant to be his. When Hatshepsut died, Thutmose waited years before striking back, ensuring her name would be forgotten. Her statues were defaced, her monuments destroyed. It wasn't enough for her to die, her memory had to die too. For centuries, archaeologists searched for her tomb, but Hatshepsut's mummy was missing. Egyptologists scoured the Valley of the Kings, uncovering other royal remains, but not hers. It was as though the most powerful woman in Egypt had been erased from both history and the earth itself. Some believed her body had been destroyed. Others whispered of a secret burial, hidden away to protect her from vengeance. Whatever the truth, Hatshepsut had disappeared so completely that her existence became little more than a rumor whispered among scholars. Then, in 1903, inside a small dusty tomb known as KV-60, British archaeologist Howard Carter, the same man who would later find Tutankhamun, stumbled upon two female mummies. One lay in a coffin bearing the name of Hatshepsut's nurse. The other, unmarked, was left forgotten on the floor. For decades, no one paid much attention. The body was ordinary, the tomb unimpressive. The great Hatshepsut everyone assumed couldn't possibly be buried in such a humble place. So the mummy was left alone, unlabeled, unstudied, and ignored for over a century. It wasn't until 2007 that the truth began to surface. A small wooden box in Cairo's museum collection, labeled simply with Hatshepsut's name, contained something strange a single tooth. DNA tests were impossible at first, but CT scans of unidentified mummies offered a clue. One of them, that forgotten woman from KV-60, had a missing tooth that matched perfectly. The discovery stunned the world. That unmarked mummy wasn't a servant or a nurse, it was Hatshepsut herself. Hidden for over 3,000 years, the true body of Egypt's lost queen had finally been found, and with it, a secret that would raise even darker questions. When Egypt scientists placed Hatshepsut's mummy inside the CT scanner, they weren't prepared for what they were about to see. The images revealed a frail, elderly woman, around 60 years old, her spine curved, her teeth worn, her body damaged by time. But it was the details that chilled them. Beneath her skin, traces of abscesses, lesions, and a swollen liver pointed to something deeper. This wasn't just a natural death. It looked as though Egypt's most powerful queen had been dying slowly from within. Inside her tomb, archaeologists had found a small alabaster flask. At first, they thought it contained perfumed lotion, the kind royal women often used for their skin. But chemical tests revealed something else. The residue inside was laced with benzopyrene, one of the most dangerous carcinogens known today, a compound found in tar and smoke. It was no cosmetic, it was poison. For years, Hatshepsut may have unknowingly applied this substance to her skin, believing it to be healing balm, while it quietly triggered an aggressive form of cancer that consumed her body from the inside out. Historians began to ask a darker question. Was Hatshepsut killed on purpose? Some believe the healing lotion was a slow-acting poison introduced by those who wanted her gone. Perhaps in the final years of her reign, when tensions at court were rising. Others think it was tragic irony that the queen's own attempts at beauty led to her death. But there's something even more chilling.
The timing of her demise and the speed of her erasure from history are too perfect to ignore. It's as if the moment she died, her enemies were ready to erase her. DNA analysis brought another shock. The tests confirmed that Hatshepsut was the daughter of Thutmose I and half-sister to Thutmose II, but there was something strange in the genetic markers. They showed a dangerous level of inbreeding, common in Egypt's royal line, which might have caused immune weaknesses and hereditary diseases. But the mitochondrial DNA passed through the maternal line revealed something even stranger, connections to Nubian ancestry linking Hatshepsut's maternal bloodline to a southern African origin that Egypt's early rulers rarely acknowledged. It suggested that the blood of Egypt's divine queen may not have been purely Egyptian at all. When the scans were over and the data was analyzed, one truth became undeniable. Hatshepsut's death wasn't just a medical mystery, it was a political one. She had ruled like a god, reshaped her nation, and defied the laws of her time. And for that, someone wanted her legacy destroyed. But the final secret lay not in her tomb, not in her monuments, but in the silence that followed her death. A silence that lasted for millennia. Because what if Hatshepsut had uncovered something Egypt's later rulers didn't want remembered? Something buried along with her, not just her body, but her truth. When Hatshepsut's identity was confirmed in 2007, Egypt's museums erupted in quiet awe. For 3,400 years of silence, her name was finally spoken again with reverence. For decades, textbooks had barely mentioned her. Now, she stood once more among the greats, a woman who ruled as king in a world that believed women couldn't. Her image began to reappear in museums, her statues reassembled, her name restored. But the more the world rediscovered her, the more it realized the story wasn't just about power. It was about how easily truth can be buried and how long it takes to rise again. Strangely, those who worked closely on her rediscovery began to speak of uncanny coincidences. Equipment malfunctioned, files corrupted, and one researcher who handled her coffin reported months of inexplicable illness. Locals whispered about the curse of the erased queen, a spirit angered by centuries of silence. Rational minds dismissed it as superstition, Yet even scientists admitted that the atmosphere around her mummy felt unnervingly heavy, as if the air itself carried the weight of her unfinished story. After all, this was a ruler who had defied gods and men alike. Maybe even death respected her rebellion. In the years since, Hatshepsut has become a global symbol of defiance. Feminist historians call her the world's first great female leader, a woman who refused to wait for permission. Egyptologists see her reign as proof that the ancient world wasn't as rigid as we once believed. And yet, there's something haunting about her legacy. She proved a woman could rule like a god, but the world only remembered her once she was gone. Even in rediscovery, her story is a warning of how power fears what it cannot control. Today, if you stand before the towering columns of her temple at Deir el-Bahari, you can still feel it, the audacity of her vision. Each carving tells a story of triumph, divine birth, and eternal rule. But look closer, and you'll see the scars. Faces chiseled away, inscriptions defaced, names erased. They tried to destroy her, but they failed. The stone still speaks, whispering through the centuries, reminding us that truth may be buried, but it is never truly lost. In that silence between the hieroglyphs, her voice still echoes. More than three millennia after her death, Hatshepsut has done what few rulers ever could. She has defeated time itself. Her enemies erased her name, her lineage, her image, and her body. But through the power of science, persistence, and truth, she has risen again. Today, her face, once hidden under wrappings of linen, stares back from museum displays across the world, calm, defiant, and timeless. Maybe that's the real secret of Egypt's immortality, not mummification, not pyramids, but memory, because some souls can't be silenced. And in the end, Hatshepsut didn't just rule Egypt, she conquered death itself.